uh, Madley slash Chelsea Manning's uh, commutation. Well, it is very ironic. Uh, the president-elect and I discussed this yesterday, but I'll just speak for me here. It's very ironic that you would have somebody who really imperiled national security, as Senator Tom Cotton said so eloquently yesterday, put our security and intelligence officers and others at risk. Uh, compared to everybody's head being on fire for how many months about WikiLeaks documents that embarrassed the Democrats and, of, of course, course, Hillary Clinton, since her staffers were questioning her judgment and the idea that she couldn't find her voice, had to focus group dozens and dozens of slogans to find out who she is and why she was running. But I, I do find it um, po partisan politics at its worst, folks, that this the way that we treat somebody or the way that we look at leaking really depends on, uh, depends on who's ox is being gored. Uh, so look, a 35-year sentence should not have been taken lightly. It's not like you got a slap on the wrist. And I really sure. don't think anybody today should be equating it to General Cartwright, who uh, had one count of lying to the FBI really to protect national security, not hey, to compromise it. You know what, uh, Kellyanne, later today, Barack Obama is going to have his final press conference. If you were a member of the press and not a member of Donald Trump's inner circle, what's the question you would ask Barack Obama regarding Chelsea Manning? Oh, I would actually ignore Chelsea Manning. Um, perhaps if, you're, if I need to ask a question, I would say exactly what I just did say, which is, why are you cherry picking uh, what leaks are important, which leaks are not important, depending on the leaker and depending on the content that was leaked. I mean, how can we look the other way? You know, Chelsea Manning's docu the documents that uh, Chelsea Manning had acquired were found on Osama bin Laden's computer, as you'll mm -hmm. remember. That tells you how sloppy this was, and it tells you how important it was, and it tells you what a great threat it was. So I would ask him why, on the altar of um, national security and intelligence, we would be so cavalier at this moment. But I would actually just ask the president, uh, President Obama, um, yes, you're going out with these approval ratings, but big deal. Why have race relations, according to all the polls, worsened to many people? Why do people not feel like the country is more united, but it's divided? Why are you leaving behind unfinished business, including a divided country, when when you took office eight years ago, all the polls showed s such hopeful optimism about coming yeah. together? And it's Donald Trump, through his inaugural address this Friday and beyond as president, is actually going to make a big attempt. Uh, through his solutions and through his words to unify a divided country. Yeah, well, yesterday when I was talking to him, he said it's not helping that all these congressmen and women are not going to the inauguration. He said that doesn't hurt him. He doesn't, you know, to That's be right. frank, he doesn't really care. It's going to help, yeah, open up some more seats. He says it hurts the country, and that's what he cares about. I agree completely, Ainsley. There's no question. These are representatives. And what does that mean? It means they've been elected to be a voice for the people and to be a conduit to their constituents about what is going on in Washington with the new administration. What better way to start that conversation than to attend the 58th inaugural and show that cohesiveness, that unity? Look, I give enormous credit to President Obama, First Lady Michelle Obama. They've been incredibly gracious and magnanimous and helpful to the president-elect, right. to the first lady-elect, and to all of us in the senior staff. Uh, the president and Secretary Clinton are coming. President Bush and Mrs. Bush are coming. Uh, yeah. President George, 41, who I hope is fine. I know he's been hospitalized. Right. Mm -hmm. He sent a wonderful note to the sure. president-elect. Oh, he did? So I think everybody wow. should follow that lead. Kellyanne, uh, stick around. We're going to come right back after this break. We're going to sell okay. some my pillows. What about Twitter? Um, are you going to continue to tweet? Yeah. Look, I don't like tweeting. I have other things I could be doing. <laughs> but I get very dishonest media, very dishonest press. And it's my only way that I can counteract. Like, for instance, when uh, John Lewis said, you know, he's never done it before where he skipped an inauguration. Well, he has. It turned out to be a lie, so I'm able to say that. Now, if the press were honest, which it's not, I would absolutely not use Twitter. I wouldn't have to. So, Kellyanne, that was uh, the sit-down yesterday with Donald Trump over at Trump Tower, and he was talking about Twitter. A lot of people wanted me to ask that question. He was saying he has 50 million followers between Facebook and Twitter. No matter what network you work for, you're never going to get that many viewers. So it's an opportunity to ha for him to have a great direct message Unfiltered. to the viewer. Right. It's precisely the way he ran his campaign and won, uh, directly communicating. The man is the most brilliant communicator and natural connector I've ever seen in politics or otherwise. And so he will continue that because the American people want information immediately. You know, Ainsley, I call this a, the democratization of information where 
you as an American get the same information as the big fancy networks and cable stations at the same time. You don't need somebody to filter it for you, to jaundice it for you. It's Donald Trump and you directly, and it costs you absolutely nothing. I hope the president-elect will tweet about last night's just amazing event here in Washington, D.C. He came uh, down and he flew down for this chairman's global dinner. Our chairman of the inaugural, Tom Barrick, put together really an unprecedented event, 200 members of the diplomatic corps, where you had ambassadors, other diplomats, ministers, and to a person, they were so excited and grateful to be included in a dinner that really sets a nice tone for the international community and the way that this president immediately will be reaching out to many different countries and their leaders to try to broker a more healthy conversation.